Reinhardt, I just can't tell you how blessed we are to have you in Alabama. Oh, thank you so much. I'm very happy to be here. When you see those videos like that, of all that God has done, and you see those crowds, and, and you, see the, you hear those thunderous voices raised, how does that make you feel? It's uh, almost like a dream. It's, what shall I say? It wasn't always like that. I started below zero, and I think anyone can start there. <laughs> and then uh, I preached sometimes in Africa already to five people. Really? And they didn't want to get saved. <laughs> it broke my heart. And then um, I had a vision of a blood-washed Africa. Wow. And I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit cry, Africa shall be saved. It just penetrated my bone and marrow. And then I started. It got me more than out of bed. It got me going. And the Holy Spirit and the Lord spoke to me these words. He said that he would give me a ministry that would be the chariot of the Holy Spirit. Wow. And that chariot has been going and running from Cape Town to Cairo. Wow. And we have seen gospel victories that are incredible. I saw crowds. Uh, I was joking with my team. I said, I think I can see the curvature of the earth. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> but it is the presence of the Holy Spirit yeah. in combination with a crystal clear gospel message yeah. that uh, with signs and wonders following yeah. that has brought about this unprecedented harvest. When did you start preaching? What year? What year did you start preaching? Oh, um, I started preaching when I was about 18, 19. You know, I mean, God called me when I was... 10 to 1 day preach the gospel in Africa. I, I, I was in Germany then. And I headed for it as straight as an arrow. So I know nothing but the gospel. So did God call you to Africa from the very beginning? Yes. Mm -hmm. The first day. When you were 10 years old? When I was 10 years old. Wow. Uh, you're from Germany. Yes. What part? North Germany. North Germany? Yes, I grew up, I grew up in Hamburg. Um, and later on, I lived in Frankfurt, but I'm neither a hamburger nor a Frankfurter. <laughs> yeah. <Well. laughs> Took me off guard there. <laughs> well, um, how, did, how did you first hear about the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Did you hear about it in Germany? Oh, yes. My father was a pastor. I was born to Pentecostal parents. Okay. That was the great wonder, I believe, that uh, uh, really was a, a, a mighty gift from God. I received the baptism in the Holy Spirit when I was 11 years of age. Wow. <clears throat> and that fortified my desire to, in my teenage years, to really serve the Lord. Yeah. And... Uh, when I was old enough to be accepted at Bible college, I had waited half my life for it. I went, and then <clears throat> it all began to roll. Now, as miracles always been part of your ministry, I know you've had a lot of souls say, but is, is miracles always been a hallmark of your ministry? I always believed that Jesus heals the sick. We prayed for the sick, and we saw miracles already before I left for Africa.
But God couldn't use me in Africa uh, with my, what I had learned in Germany. Hmm. So I w went into a period of a couple of years of having to unlearn what I learned. And then he taught me by his spirit through African people wow. how to trust him simply and how to take the word of God at face value. That changed me radically and suddenly miracles popped up like popcorn. Wow. So you had to be deprogrammed. That, I would say that is the cor a corrupt way of calling it. Do you think that's why here in America there's not more miracles? Is because we need to be deprogrammed? Well, we ne need to get rid of our unbelief, you know. I think that is the... My problem was this, you see. I, I theoretically, mentally, I, I believe that Jesus can do any miracle. But when they brought the sick to me, I said to myself, yes, Jesus heals the sick. But how do I know that he wants to heal that sick person right now? Then I got cold feet and I stepped back. And that is what I had to unlearn. And then I learned when I pray for the sick, what happens is not my responsibility. God sticks to his word, yeah. and he does. That's awesome. Well, we could sit here all night and talk, but I know you've seen so many miracles. Would you just take a minute and just sort of whet our appetites and tell us of a few? Wow, I, 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 love, I love to tell that. Um, I want to tell you what happened that God got me into the first gear with regard to miracles. Um, that was while I was in the tiny country of Lesotho, the capital city of Maseru, where I was a missionary at that time. And um, my church was a miracle-free zone. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I know what you mean. And, and I suffered <laughs> under it. Uh, and then I read in the newspapers that across the border in the Republic of South Africa, there was a certain Dutch Reformed minister whom God used in, in divine healing. And I, I, I said to my wife, I said, I'm going to visit him and ask him to come to us for one weekend. And um, I went there, I pleaded with him to come just for two services, Saturday and Sunday. To my surprise, he agreed. I was absolutely uh, uh, happy. I went back to Lesotho. I advertised, come and see God's power in action. And when the day came, I saw the cripples crawl on all four down the mountain. And I said, oh, hallelujah, thank God, Jesus, you will have plenty of opportunity to show your power here through the great man that is coming. The first meeting started. Here was that great man from South Africa. He preached 10 minutes, at the most 15 minutes, when suddenly he turned to me, called me up and whispered into my ear and said, close the service. <laughs> I said, I will not close the service. <laughs> he said, I told you to close the service. Now he was the big man and I was, you know, I was very young and dumb. I said to him, I will close the service on one condition, that you promise to pray for the sick tomorrow because I invited you for that. He said, okay. Wow. I told the people tomorrow. The next day morning, I passed the venue 
there were twice as many people wow. as the night before. I was so happy. I went to the Holiday Inn where my guest was staying. And when I arrived there, I couldn't, I couldn't believe my eyes. He stood in a safari suit, as we called it in South Africa. That these are sh short, sh short uh, legged pants. You know? And I thought, wow, you use them for a safari. In South Africa, do, you don't preach in short trousers. No, uh, no. You know. Not me. No, I, no, no. Uh. So, so, I said, hello, what are you doing? He said, I'm glad that you come because I'm going home. I said, you cannot do that to me. You dare not do that to me. Remember, you promised. He said to me, the Holy Spirit told me to go. Wow. I said, nonsense. <laughs> the Holy Spirit will never tell a man of God to run away from a gospel meeting. No, no, no. No, impossible. He said, I'm going anyway. That moment, I kind of woke up. I got into my car and, and I had a defining moment of my life behind that steering wheel. Yes, you did. I cried to God, Oh Lord! I'm not a big evangelist, but Lord, I am your servant also. And now I will go. I will preach. I will pray for the sick and you will do the miracles. I went to the church. My pastors, my Basutu pastors, when they saw me get out of the car and, and the guest was missing, <laughs> they came to me and they said, what happened? I said, I've got bad news and I've got good news. Which one do you want to hear first? <laughs> <laughs> they said, the bad news. I said, the bad news is that the great man of God has left. Oh my God. The good news is that Jesus stayed. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> and he's still here. <laughs> I said, and I will preach. And I will pray. And Jesus will do the miracle. Miracles. Yeah. The pastor said, okay, while you are preaching, we will go into an adjacent room to pray for you. <laughs> they knew I needed it. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The meeting started. I told the people why the great man had left, but I said, don't worry. Jesus is here. I started to preach. The moment I started to preach, I felt something. You know, the Holy Spirit was right there. <laughs> I spoke through a, a small interpreter. And I think one drop of the anointing must have fallen on him. Because he collapsed. <laughs> he fell down. I mean, he, and he cried like a little boy, loud. <laughs> 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 my interpreter had become my interrupter. <laughs> <laughs> and then the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And this is what he said. Words I had never known. At first I thought it sounded like a heresy. He said, the Lord said, my word in your mouth is just as powerful as my word in my mouth. 
I saw the powers in the word. The word of God. Yes. And he put that word into my mouth. Yes. My interpreter had finished crying and we continued preaching when suddenly the Holy Spirit spoke to me again and he said pray for the totally blind people wow the devil whispered into my ear what if nothing happens that moment the spirit of faith came over me a spirit of faith a boldness a strength uh, 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 I would say Holy Ghost uh, audacity and I said devil if nothing happens it doesn't matter now. What matters now is that I obey the voice of the Holy Spirit. And I stood up, I said, how many blind people have we got here? Four. One, two, three, four. Right across the building. Totally blind. And I said to them, that was in Africa. I said, in a minute, you're going to see a white man on the platform. <laughs> no. Man, I realized, I, re I realized, you don't need to defend the lion. You just need to open the cage. And, 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 and Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Yeah. And he has prevailed. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I said, okay, lift your hands. I'm going to speak the word of authority. And with all my might, I shouted, in the name of Jesus, blind eyes open. Suddenly, a scream right there. I can see. I can see. I can see. I can see. Oh. That moment I learned a lesson for the rest of my life. I think more than one. But one very specific lesson. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of healing. Because all of a sudden, the Spirit of God was everywhere. Everywhere. The people were jumping up, some on the benches, some were on the floor. Some were dancing, screaming, others were weeping, crying. The Holy Spirit is a healing spirit. Yes. Yes. And when the Holy Spirit falls, people don't just talk in new tongues, you know. Any miracle is possible. Yes. Any miracle Any is miracle. possible. Any miracle. So, uh, miracles happened everywhere. The cripples walked, the blind saw, the everywhere miracles of miracles right there at the back was a mother with her crippled little child and she couldn't come forward it was all too dense but the people were now praising the Lord their hands were up so they they passed that crippled baby or what child oh into the hands of the people and right to the front and one two three that child had arrived in my arms and i looked at the bones they were twisted like spaghetti he had never walked and god forgive me but i forgot to pray 
<laughs> I just looked at that little boy and suddenly that little body began to vibrate. Wow. Stronger, stronger, stronger. And may for God forgive me again, I dropped him. <laughs> but he fell on his feet. <laughs> and he was running. Wow. Oh, hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. You know, when that meeting was over, I stood with my back to the wall of the building. I saw the people leaving. I stood there, tears gushing out of my eyes. I said, dear Holy Spirit, I want to ask for forgiveness. Wow. Because now I know you did send the big man away. <laughs> and I said, Lord, today you launched my ship. And I'm still sailing. Yes, you are. That's how, it, how I started. That's how I started. That was just the start. So really, what happened is God forced your hand. He forced your hand. He, he fixed it to where everything turned in a way that you didn't expect it to turn. I think he saw the longing of my heart. You know, I so much wanted it. I just didn't know how to respond to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. And once we learn that, you know, people ask me now, I'm old, and people ask me how I keep the fire of God going. I said, I don't keep the fire of God going. The fire of God keeps me going. You know, it's an act of God. He saw my longing, and then he gave, he gave these breakthroughs. And then it, it kept going and going, and uh, the crowds started to grow. One day, the, 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 the banks burst. The river of God was flowing. People came by the hundreds of thousands. Wow. I said, what, what has happened now? Yeah. I, I felt I was always the same. So the preacher, the big preacher that, that left, he actually knew that was going to happen to you. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I met him afterwards again. I am not sure. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, the finger of God had touched me. Yeah. And his fingerprint never left me. Yeah. Well, let me ask you something else. I, is this okay? Is this okay with you? Oh, absolutely. Oh, good. We're having a good time, aren't we? I love t telling you what God has done. We're having a good time. Well, you know, how many people would you say you've seen raised from the dead? There are quite uh, a few. Uh, the, the, the thing is, uh, we could not verify all as we did, especially with one. You know, when you have got there, a big crowd of people and uh, uh, um, somebody brings or a mother has a, a, a child in her arms that has died yeah. and in prayer suddenly the child comes back to life yeah. um, I, I, I fully accept that that was right. raising from the dead right. but in this world, you've got to prove everything medically. Oh, yeah. You see? Sure. Oh, yeah. The, the death certificate, the death setup, and all the other. Uh, we do not have so many of those uh, proven, so called proven yeah. uh, uh, miracles, but I have seen one miracle that has knocked all dust out of me. I want to hear about that because we all know about it. We just want to hear you tell it. Oh. Yeah. I set you up. 
I set you up. <laughs> I, I was in, uh, I was in Onitsha. That is a city in Nigeria. I went there only because a Nigerian pastor asked me to be there at his church opening. Really? I say, that, say that one more time. <laughs> <laughs> say that one more time. I said, I'm not going to church openings. I said, that's not my, it's not my, my line. I'm an evangelist. I said, it's not my line. <laughs> Um, did you, but did, because I loved him. Did you feel anything when you said that? Because I loved him. <laughs> I, I said, I will do it. But I said, I will connect it with my next trip to uh, Nigeria. I come to open the church on Sunday. And on Monday, I will have to go to uh, Oshokpo, where an, a, a, a big crusade of ours start, starts. So... I arrive in Onitsha. The church is packed with 12,000 people. Packed, packed, packed. And I start to preach. And while I preach, they brought a coffin to the church with a dead man. A young man, about 32 years of age, who had died in a car accident. Uh, the doctor had issued the death certificate. The mortician had embalmed him. He was taken, he was taken to the mortuary for three days. The family was there. They all had seen him. He was gone. You said he was embalmed? Embalmed. They put formaldehyde. Ma I, I know what it means, yeah. Yeah, I know what it means. Yeah. 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 They pumped it into their body, you know. Yeah. I mean, that is pure poison. I know, yeah. yeah. And uh, the, the mortician was a, a real animist, a heathen. A heathen. Anyway, there was the death certificate, they were the fam there was the family, there was the story, there was the doctor, everything, everything was absolutely there. Now, the wife, she said, I have seen a poster in the city. The anointed of the Lord is here, Reinhard Bonnke. She said, if I can only bring my dead husband somewhere close to him wow. I believe my husband will rise because Hebrews 11 says that women got their, their dead, dead men back again Jesus. now she rented she rented an ambulance and came with the corpse against the wish of the family they were ready to bury him she brought him. Wow. While I was preaching, I saw the commotion there, but in Africa, that's nothing special. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And they would not allow, the ashes would not allow the coffin to be brought into the building because they said it would disturb, be too much of a disturbance. Oh, oh yeah, sure. So they, they fought physically. That lady, she dug in her heels and won the battle. Wow. I bless her. Yeah. And then uh, they said, you must, take, you must take the corpse into the basement. We allow that. The, the security police was there, uh, looking after my safety, government people. Supposed to look after my safety, <laughs> yeah. you know, and they said no you anyone can say a corpse is in this coffin open it up Maybe there's a bomb 
They opened them up, there was a corpse. So they said, you don't take the coffin in, you just take the body out, put them into the basement. They took him into the basement and put him onto a, something like a table. And I was preaching and I was praying and suddenly the corpse, somebody had his camera on him, was gasping for air. While you were preaching? Yes. I had to catch a plane to go to my crusade. I went into the vestry or the green room when they were banging against the wall, the wall and shouted and said, he is already breathing. Wow. I said, who is breathing? We are all breathing. Then I only heard about the dead man. I, I hadn't known there was a corpse in the cathedral. And uh, that man lives today, is a preacher of the gospel, yeah. Yeah. travels the world, and tells his testimony of what Jesus has done. I've seen him. You? Oh, I've you seen did? Him. Yes, sir. Yes. He gave me, you know, he was so grateful to me. Although I actually did nothing. <laughs> he, he wanted to give me a great present. He gave me his death certificate. <laughs> really? Give me the death certificate. In a very solemn way. I said, listen. I don't want a death certificate on my wall. You must put that on your wall, not on my wall. I'm yeah. among the living. Hey, yeah. But you have got the experience that Jesus can raise from the dead. We serve a mighty God. Yes, we do. Later on, I asked him, I said, you died of injuries to your chest in the car. Because when he was lying there on that table and the people, some people saw that he, he came back to life, they started to massage him to get that. Wow. To, to get From, all. Formaldehyde. <laughs> formaldehyde. Yeah. Yeah, the, his wife said that for four months he stunk like a carbadery. <laughs> No, honest. Really? Yeah. So I said to him, I, I said, Daniel, uh, I, I said, um, you died of, 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 of injuries to your body. Do you have pains? Yes, he said, I have pains. I said, from the injuries? No, he said, from the terrible massage. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you this. I know there's a lot of preachers watching live streaming. There's, there's a lot of preachers in here tonight, but what would you especially say to young preachers that feel they're inadequate, that feels that um, they don't really matter and that they'll never have success, you know, the way that they see other preachers have success? What would you say to them? I would tell them what happened to me. I grew up in post-war Germany. We were refugees in a foreign country yeah. until I was nine years of age. Only when I was nine years and we were repatriated to Germany did I come into a proper school. I battled at school. You battled? I battled. You know, they were years ahead. Yeah. I was to catch up. So I had lots of bad notes. I scored poorly. I had that, that, that came kind of into my whole system. 
I was worthless, useless. How could God use me? But then, in Germany, when somebody, when somebody is really no good, we call him a zero. You know, the word, German word is null. Ah, Reinhardt, he's a null. Look at, look the way he is at school. That changed all after a two, two, three years. Then I really did very well, but that was a bad time. I was a zero. I said, Lord, I'm a zero. Lord, I'm a zero. And suddenly I realized, Jesus is the number one. And when the zero stood next to Jesus, we were already 10. <laughs> It's all that. Yes. And you know, since that day, I never, I don't mind to be the last zero. Because the last zero is the most valuable one. And this is how Jesus still works with all of us. We may be a zero as long as he's the number one. We are valuable. I want to say that to any preacher. I want to say that to anybody. Talk to him. You and the Holy Spirit in company with Jesus, you can chase every devil out of America. Amen, amen. Amen. I want to ask you one more thing. You've had great success all over Africa. You've had great success in your ministry. But now you feel called to America. What do you see for America right now? Thank you for the question. Um, Africa, what I have seen in Africa, what God can do and I saw and see in Africa has given me incurable faith for America. Amen, amen. And I don't want to be healed from it. Yeah. Incurable. Amen. Incurable. I've been, I've been right down and he started to lift and lift and lift. And I responded to the spirit of God every time I could feel how I was rising actually you know yeah. the crowds got bigger we saw miracles greater many many more I witnessed one million people it within three minutes receiving the baptism in the Holy Spirit and the scripture, my spirit and all flesh in the last days, becomes reality. In one meeting in Lagos, I preached to 1,600,000 people. The next morning, I got the count of the uh, decisions for Christ. There were 1,093,271. In one meeting, one meeting, God is able, God is able. I was in Switzerland, I preached to a conference of 2,000 pastors, I told them about I said, in 10 years, within 10 years, we saw in Africa 55 million people get saved. In 10 years only. 55 million. 55 million. So afterwards, the Swiss people, some pastors came to me and they said, Reinhardt, that is Africa. Yeah. This is Switzerland. I said to them, but you are contradicting scripture. Come on. They said to me, which scripture? I said, John 3 for 16. 
For wow. God so loved the world. Wow. I said, you Swiss people have now got to tell me whether Switzerland is part of that world of John 3.16. Mm. I said, and I'm not finished yet. I said, if God can save 55 million people in 10 years in Africa, he can save Switzerland one Saturday afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> what about Alabama? Hey! hey. <laughs> <laughs>